Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to be showing you how to use the mask and the mask tracking effect in Premiere, which is pretty useful at times. There's a ton of uses you can find for the mask. One kind of popular use is like blurring out somebody's face. First of all, any effects that you add to Premiere, let me go in and grab one here, like let's find a color corrector, I'm going to drag that and drop it on here. You will find these three little shapes right here. This is a mask, and what the mask is, is used for is to tell it what portion of the screen you want to add the mask to. Now down here on this, on the little mask here, you've got a circle shape mask, you can create a lips mask, you can create a four point polygon mask, which is square shaped or just four points. You can make it kind of, you can change it and make it a slightly different square shape. And you also have a free draw bezier tool. So first of all, let's kind of show how this mask works and then we'll get into, into the tracking part, which is pretty good. So right now I'm going to, let's just grab the, the square mask and kind of demonstrate this. And it creates this little square right here. And now what you can do is you can go to the edge and you can grab these little points here and you can move this and change the shape of the mask here. So you make this mask, this four point mask of a different shape. And now watch what happens as we change our color. Let's grab, let's add a heavy blue to this. We add a heavy blue to this. Notice it only affects the region inside the mask. Normally, if you didn't have a mask at all, let's turn the mask off. I'm going to go to this mask right here and hit delete with it highlighted. Notice it affects the entire image. It added that blue hue to the entire shot. But if you add a mask, it's only going to affect the region that's inside the mask. So this is pretty, pretty cool here. So a couple things that you can do with the mask here. Of course, as I mentioned, what they've added on these two shaped ones, on the circle and the square, they've added four nodes. This one in a circular shape here. If you grab these nodes here, you, of course you can change the shape of the mask. You grab these nodes and drag them out and it will change the shape. What you've got here, on any one of these masks that you have, you're going to have three things here. You're going to have basically a little grow point here from where you can grow the mask. Well, you've got th this, you can put on any part of the mask to manipulate that portion of the mask specifically, but it's going to do it all at once anyway. It's going to change the entire mask anyway. But what we've got here, but you can, if you need to position this in a part where it's more viewable or accessible, you can grab this and move it around. And now you've got the square and the circle here. The square is going to increase the size of your mask. As I grab this and drag it out, it's going to expand the mask outwards and make it larger. And what you've got on this little circle here, so that's what the square does, it just grows the mask. And now if you grab the circle and drag it out, you'll have this inner dotted line and this outer dotted line. What that basically is, is it is a feather. It starts from here to here. It's going to basically gradually fade the mask out. So it's basically a feather here. It feathers the mask out. So you can see here, as you increase the feather here, it's really soft. It just kind of gradually fades from blue to just regular color there. So that's the circle mask. If you do a square mask, it's going to do pretty much the same thing. And you can add, by the way, you can add as many masks as you want on a single image. Right now, so, so I've still got my original circle mask that I made right there. Now I've got my square mask that I've made here. I can, with my hand, if you just hover over it until you get this hand, you can just move this. Notice down here, let's make this really extreme so we can really see what we're doing here. I'm gonna go to my color and I'm going to grab the gain on my color and boost it way up so you can really see where the mask is affecting. So it's just a square region now on our second mask. And once again, you can expand it. By the way, on the hard edged uh, square, it's going to bevel it or it's going to curve it around the corner to kind of soften out the edges of the, of the square. And now we can grab the circle and drag that out and it's going to feather it. So we have two portions. This isn't a really practical explanation of why you're going to be using the mask, but I just want to demonstrate the uses here. So I'm going to delete these two masks here. I'm going to select my first mask, delete, select my second one, delete, and I want to show the Bezier tool. Now the Bezier tool will affect a certain region here, and a certain region that you can actually draw. Say we want to draw around this lady and we want just her to be blue. You can actually click Click, click. Now look what's happening here. It's making these hard edges as you click. So if you're going to be doing this, you're going to have to be clicking like a bunch of times and it can get quite difficult. So I'm going to show you a little easier way. If you just click and move, it's going to draw this line all the way around. But if you click and drag, um, you just click once and you start dragging Im immediately before you let go of the mouse. Click and drag, click and drag. You can create a bezier. And you can actually go back to these points and change them as well later on. But there we go. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna quickly oops I'm gonna quickly just finish this off here. I'm not really getting too picky now, but when you finally come here you click on the last one and it joins it all together and now it's got that lady drawn out in that shape. Of course you can grab the edge, 
feather it and soften it a little bit, and now we've got a blue lady. And that's basically what those shapes do. I'm going to reset this back to normal, but now I'm going to show kind of one of the particular reasons why you might want to use a mask here. And see, some people, if they're doing news footage and they want to blur out somebody's face, that is a very common use. Either blur out their face or use a mosaic. Come down here in the effects, and we type in blur. And let's put a Gaussian blur on this. Drop that on, let go. And now we're going to create a mask and we're going to make that blur. Now notice if we grab the blur blurriness here and we drag it to the left, it makes the whole image out of focus. But of course we're going to use a circle mask and now it's just going to put it inside the circle on that effect. So I'm going to drag this over her face. I'm going to size this so it's the proper size, kind of the oval shape of a human face. Block it out. There we go. I'm going to grab the edge and we're going to feather the edge. There it's a little, I've softened the edges, but we're starting to see the face, so I can just actually expand it and get it all the way over the face. And now we can't see the lady's face. There we go. That's one practical use of the mask within Premiere. Notice this as we grab our playhead and we kind of drag through this, of course, as the camera moves, her face is revealed from behind the mask. The mask does not move with her face. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that, I'm going to get that back to where I put put that mask on her face. Actually, we can go to the beginning of the clip. I'm going to move to the beginning of the clip right there. And I'm going to get the mask. I'm going to put it right over her face. These are mask tracking tools here. Premiere's added this hefty little feature. I think they added it back in the in 2014 updates where you can actually track that mask. And actually, let's let's, let's move this in the middle here because I want to kind of show how powerful this is. I'm going to move, move it over her face here. Got a few things here. You can click on the wrench and you can see that it is changing the mask based on position. If the face is rotating, if something is rotating or changing size, first of if it's just rotating and moving, you'll want to choose position and rotation. It will it will detect and it will rotate the mask if her face happens to tilt one side to one side or the other. Position scale and rotation is nice because if the camera is getting closer to a person or further away, you'll want to put on position scale and rotation, and it will detect the scale of the image and it will try to increase the size of the mask as well. I've tried this out on a few things and it does really really well. Let's try position right now. What we've got here are these are tracking keys. You can uh, click this to do track one frame forward and it will start adding keyframes to your mask because it tracks her face. You can do one, one frame backwards at a time, or you can just usually just click, track the, the mask forward. It'll do it from this from the playhead forward until the end of the clip. Let's click on that, and we're going to track it forward and see how it does. Now you can see the mask is tracking with her face. It does a really good job. If somebody crosses in front, you can actually turn the mask off for a few keyframes and then continue it when that person has passed by. If something passes in front of this lady here on the shot, it's going to lose the tracking. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to get it back. Let's play through this and kind of look at the mask here. And notice the mask, the blur, follows her face. There we go. I did not track before this. I wanted to show what happens when you track before. I'm going to get it kind of before the first keyframe starts. And I'm going to go to next keyframe so it lands on the very first keyframe. And now I'm going to track backwards to finish off this clip because I started it in the middle. I just want, I did that intentionally instead of doing it at the beginning of the clip just to show how powerful the tracker is here. Track backwards. Okay, now the track has gone backwards. Let's play through the clip here. And there we go. The tracking follows her face. Her face is blurred out the entire time. And if you say, well, I don't think that's blurred out enough, the tracking is done, so all you have to do is go to blurriness and just make it more heavy, and then you can't see anything on her face there. And we can expand the mask and the keyframes stay the same, and now her face is completely blurred out. Can't see a thing. So... Uh, another thing that you can do here, so let's grab, I'm going to grab another one. I'm going to grab a mosaics and grab the mosaic and drop, drag and drop it onto this clip here. And it creates mosaics for the whole thing here. And I'm going to make this a little bit more blocky. So we're going to use, because some people use mosaics instead of a blur. So let's uh, make, make mosaics here. There we go. And now the mosaics is done, I'm going to go, I'm going to turn off my Gaussian blur, by the way. And I'm going to arrow down and I'm going to grab this mask. I'm going to command C and copy it. I copied that mask. I'm going to go to mosaic and command V and paste. And there we go. We've got the same keyframes pasted over. We've got the same, the, the tracking has already been done. So I just copied and pasted that to mosaics because I decided I didn't want the blur. I wanted mosaics. And now I'm going to go to the mask. I'm going to go to the mask and kind of calm down the size a little bit. And there we go. And now we got the mosaics over the face. Let's show kind of another cool way of using the mask here. 
I'm going to actually, we're going to do what's called a secondary color correction. And I've got a tutorial that's coming up on, on secondary color correction. But that's where you pull out one color and kind of change one color hue in the image uh, instead of uh, changing the overall color scheme of an image here. So I'm going to find my color corrector, my three-way three -way color corrector. I'm going to drag and drop that onto my clip here. And I'm going to go through this kind of quickly because, like I said, I've got a demo coming up. But I just want to show you kind of the power of using the mask here. I'm going to my secondary color correction. I'm going to choose kind of this blue of the shirt here. Say I want to emphasize the blue, like in the sky, or emphasize the blue on somebody's shirt or something like that. And I want to just keep the emphasis to just the shirt and, not, and nothing else. I don't want to boost the blues up in anything else. I just want to bring out the saturation of the shirt. I'm going to grab the little eyedropper here and we're going to select a blue shirt there. Click on show mask. It's a little bit different than regular than the mask that we're doing with the tracking. This is showing what I'm color correcting here. I'm going to increase the hue and try to get the shirt saturation. Okay, so right now I'm just going to be correcting just the blues in the shirt, but notice there's all those little hints and hits of blue over here in other parts of the image. So what I'm going to do here, let's go and turn off my mask now. And watch what happens as I correct this, as I just go to saturation, we go up to master saturation and we boost it. Notice how the, the shirt gets really blue and we can even grab our mid-tones here and just boost it, like super, super boost it. Watch this, look how blue that shirt's getting there. Let's turn this on and off, see how blue that gets there. That's like boosted way too much. But look at also up here, it's also saturated these little hints of blue that are reflecting from the sky in the window. And we say we don't want that blue, we just want a really, really blue shirt and not the sky. This is a good instance where we can use the mask here. So I'm going to go under my Bezier tool here and we're going to, I'm going to scale this down to 50%. And I'm, so I can see underneath the lady here. And I'm going to just basically draw kind of a bezier around just the lady. And there we go. So now notice it is just affecting. Let's go back up to fit here. And notice we don't get those big blue hits up there in the window anymore. We're just getting it on a shirt. But of course the camera's moving so we can track that as well. So let's show you right now. I'm going to turn off the mask here. I'm just going to delete the mask and then undo. And watch up here in the window as I turn it off. Right now her shirt is really blue. But watch up here in the window as I delete the mask. It just added that blue up here and we... And, if we do, and in the sign over here as well. So we don't want that. Watch this. I'm going to gain it again just to show. See all that blue? Watch what happens when I when I put the mask back on. And that blue is gone. So now, of course, this lady is moving. I've got this kind of in the middle or, or a little bit toward the end here. So I'm just going to hit my track forward. And now it will stay on this lady. And it will keep at, it will keep doing that secondary color correction on the blue and bring out the highlights of the blues on her shirt. Like when it wipes the next shot, you can see the difference there. I'm going to go back before, or go back to my earlier keyframe, my beginning keyframe, and track backwards. And there we go. As we play through this now, we've got the very, very blue color on the shirt there. In fact, here, let me show you the before and after. There's before, there's after. We've got a lot of blue on the shirt, and it's not doing it to the sky or in the sign there. So it's just adding blue to the shirt and not to the sky or to the sign. So that's another kind of cool practical explanation or another cool practical use of the mask tracking mask feature in Premiere. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and post them. Thank you.